Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein saga. We have the year 1906. So as you remember, uh, Rubinstein got the phenomenal third place uh, in very strong legendary tournament in Ostende. Uh, he could play against the, the best players in the world and according to the chess metrics, after that tournament, his ranking was 2666 and that meant Akiba Rubinstein was number fourth player in the world. So now imagine he came back to his hometown um, to the chess club in Łódź uh, and he started to literally uh, win with everybody. He just started to bully his fellow, uh, you know, uh, chess players, uh, friends from his club. Uh, and one of the tournament which was organized um, was won by Akiba Rubinstein. I will show you uh, the standings at the end, what just happened in this tournament. But this is one of the games in this tournament. Akiba Rubinstein Rubinstein gonna play as white and his opponent August Mund who's gonna play as black and we know completely nothing who was August Mund. We have no information at all. Uh, and I try to find also some uh, historical Russian websites, but uh, still uh, no information. We've just seen after that tournament, he just disappeared from the chess history uh, and he was played in 1920. That means 14 years later in some tournament in Russia. And he represented Nizhny Novgorod, so very possible that after a um, uh, Russian revolution, maybe he moved to Russia and he lived there, or maybe before. We have no idea what just happened. However, August Mund was one of the best players in at that time uh, in Wood. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Akiba Rubinstein opened with e4, we have e5, and here against much weaker opponents, a uh, knight on c3. Vien Gambit. Knight on f6. And here Rubinstein could go for very sharp Frankenstein Dracula variation. However, it was not named this way, uh, you know, in his times. That is much later. However, I will, I will just show you. Bishop on c4 and knight on e4. Now, if the knight is taken, then d5, winning back the material and getting the rapid development. So, rather queen on h5 and after knight on d6, covering f7, the game can be still very sharp. Uh, I'm not sure if it was played at that time uh, because Rubinstein simply goes for a uh, very late, uh, you know, version of King's Gambit. However, with the knight developed to f6 already. We have d5, very sharp, opening the center, f takes on e5 and now knight on e4. Knight on f3 by Rubinstein, bishop on e7 and now d3, kicking the, the knight. And this is still playable in the 21st century. The main line here, knight on c3 and after b, b takes on c3, uh, just castle. Bishop on e2, c5, controlling the center, and, and after castle, the game, of course, can continue. So this is the 21st century approach. However, we have more uh, or less, you know, still some romantic era. So this knight started to jump around. We have knight on c5, and now d4, kicking the, the knight. Knight on e6, uh, nice place for the knight. However, the problem with this knight, it's blocking the bishop. So this bishop cannot go to f5. Uh, like in the advanced variation of Karo Khan. You see already the structure with the d4 uh, and e5 pawn and the bishop is blocked. So uh, it's more maybe like French. So Rubinstein played bishop on d3, uh, very common idea. Uh, and now we have castle. We have castle by Rubinstein as well, and now immediately challenging this uh, annoying pawn on e5 by f6. We have queen on e2, now defending this pawn, bringing extra defender, but now knight on c6, attacking the pawn uh, on d4. Uh, we have bishop on e3 by Rubinstein, defending, and now finally f takes on e5, knight on e5, knight on e5, and d takes on e5. So white still have this pawn on e5. However, the f file is open and white almost finished the development we have c6 consolidating the position but now queen on h5 starting the attack as black didn't develop the pieces yet so you can imagine you know uh, how rubinstein played uh, at that time and how other players and uh, and moon definitely was one of the um, the best players in the club but that was you know uh, just couple of classes difference between uh, rubinstein and other 
other players after all this Western tournament in Barman 1905, in Ostende 1906. And here, uh, how would you defend as black? And it's very important question because, for example, after h6, black losing immediately because simply bishop on h6, g takes on h6 and queen on g6. Uh, knight on g7 can be played, but then queen h7 and that's checkmate as the, the f file is open. So that's not possible. Rook on f1 could be interesting. However, after rook on f1, uh, the knight f8 defending h7, everything looks fine. However, Queen f7, king h8, and now bishop g5. And bishop g5 is very, very strong. The bishop cannot be taken because of the checkmate on f8, okay? With the, with the support of the rook, that would be a checkmate. So probably uh, black would have to play something like bishop on e6, but it's still losing, uh, at least losing the piece. Simply queen on e6 and just exchanging everything knight can jump to, to g6 but as you see white has one extra piece very well located so definitely that's winning uh, and also if black tries something like knight on g6 defending the bishop it also doesn't work uh, and it's also forced bishop on e7 queen on e7 queen on e7 knight e7 and now rook f8 uh, and it can be blocked however this pawn uh, gonna win the game and it cannot be stopped uh, it can be taken however the cost is the whole rook so also white is winning so definitely a very difficult position uh, for Mund. however he still um, you know can defend he played g6 which is the best move in the position uh, and it's still you know difficult to force anything of course bishop on g6 is the obvious sacrifice h takes on g6 queen takes on g6 and knight on g7 uh, and here bishop on h6 and here again uh, august Mund has to play very very precise there is only one way actually to defend that position and it's bishop on c5 with check and making a space for the queen on on e7 this is the only way to actually uh, continue the game so for example bishop on c5 king h8 queen e7 uh, and it's not easy for white, you know, to continue the attack. However, unfortunately for Mund, uh, he chose the different continuation. First, he exchanged the rooks and this is the fatal mistake. So rook on f1, rook on f1 and only now bishop c5. Uh, and that doesn't work because after king on h1, queen on e7, this position is lost for black. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? It's not easy to find the, the most precise move, but believe me or not, the most precise move is knight on e4. Very important because it doesn't give any chances to Moon to, to continue the game. The threat is bringing the, the knight to f6 and of course uh, deliver the checkmate. So uh, d takes on e4 is forced and then e6 with the threat of the rook coming to f7. Uh, so after uh, the queen cannot take because the checkmate on g7, so bishop on e6 uh, and now bishop g7. Uh, and now after queen on g7, queen e6, king on h8, rook f5, winning the queen and the game. So uh, that's the continuation, the perfect continuation. However, Rubinstein played e6. Uh, and e6 is also winning because after this move, uh, believe me or not, August Mund resigned. And he resigned a little bit too early. And... Uh, what is the difference between, you know, knight on e4 first uh, and e6 immediately? The difference is this pawn should be on e4. That is the difference. And why? Because after bishop on e6 and bishop on g7, black has actually one extra very unexpected move. Bishop on f5 with the attack on the queen. So there are no, uh, you know, discoveries here. Uh, and also the rook cannot take the bishop because there is a checkmate on the first rank so very interesting and this is why the knight
knight on e4 with the pawn on e4 it was so important because there was no bishop on f5 possibility so uh, in this position queen on f5 would have to be played uh, and after king on g7 the game could continue white is winning have one extra pawn and these two connected pass pawn uh, would definitely win the game however the game could continue here so uh, maybe Mund, uh, you know, resigned a bit too early. However, he probably calculated uh, that Akiba Rubinstein is very precise. He was the legend. He was, you know, already a superstar. So he trusts Akiba calculation that's after bishop on e6, uh, bishop g7. Uh, this is completely losing. Uh, as you see, he could continue and uh, not this way, uh, but this is probably what he calculated. And, uh, and this is why he resigned after e6. So that was uh, the, the game uh, of this tournament i would like to show you the standings as you see akiba rubinstein won uh, or draw some of the games he was very gentle with that however there is one lost against rot levy uh, everybody probably knows rot levy because of the immortal game however here uh, rot levy was uh, outplayed by rubinstein as well but uh, rubinstein was so confident that he just blundered the game very interesting but as you see he still uh, managed to win this tournament so uh, we can say he just you know came uh, and he started to bully people but not so not so much as you see he was very gentle uh, he just you know won that tournament and definitely had some fun so uh, yeah that's all for today if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other quality content press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and See you in the next one.